Hello, everyone. I'm Remy. I'm one of the maintainers of the brain imaging data structure, and I'm a postdoc at the University Catholic de Louvain. And today I'm joined with by Julia and Sylvain to talk about the incoming extension to bits that they are uh, leading about. Uh, it's going to be an extension about animal electrophysiology, and we're just going to have a little chat about the content and what's going on with that uh, BEP. So I'm going to first have them introduce themselves. Julia, you want to go first? Okay. So my name is Julia Spanger, and I'm working in the group of Silva uh, at the INT in Marseille. And yes, so we started this initiative for the EFIS uh, BITS extension. Okay. Silva? So I'm Sylvain Takarka. I'm the head of uh, neuroinformatics at uh, uh, an institute in, in, in Marseille, in the south of France, which is called the Institut de Neurosciences de la Timone. Good. Okie doke. All right. So first, I think I'm going to try to like set the stage. I'm, I'm going to ask you to tell me about sort of the, I would say, like the origin story of the BEP, sort of need for it, uh, and where, where, when it all started, where the idea come from, and what, what has led you to just starting this BEP. Yeah, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and, uh, uh, so, uh, what happened is that we actually got some, uh, funding to, uh, to try to, uh, standardize, uh, uh, data organization and structuration and, and metadata and the associated metadata, uh, based on, uh, uh, some work that happened, uh, between a collaboration that happened between our institute in Marseille and, uh, the Ulysse Research Center in Germany. There was a collaboration. And so we, we did set it up, uh, we did set up such a, such an organization and such a structuration for this uh, particular collaborative project. And then we got funding to extend this first to, uh, all the teams within our institute. But at the same time, uh, the, the goal was to make this, uh, uh, an open project. And so we, uh, we, we began to, uh, to actually talk to more and more people about it and, uh, and, 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 and there was a creation of uh, an INCF uh, working group mm -hmm. uh, that's dedicated uh, more globally to uh, stru structuration of uh, animal data, because a lot has been done on, on, on uh, human data, but uh, less on animal data. And it's uh, at this stage, it's a bit more challenging. And uh, one of the solutions we were exploring in this group was uh, was whether uh, bids was uh, uh, could feel the needs of uh, structuration for animal data. And so at some point with, uh, with, uh, Yulia, we actually, uh, drafted the, a bids, uh, extension proposal as an exercise. And then we realized that it was not so bad. So we actually, uh, <laughs> made it, a, a, an official, uh, extension proposal. Okay. So it was, it turned, it turned, it was an exercise and turned something, something that was just more than just sandboxing and turned into a real thing. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, I was curious also as to whether there were any sort of or whether there are any other existing sort of data structure standards that, um, in, um, uh, electrophysiology for like animal, uh, whether there was, there are things that already exist and that didn't exactly fit your need or whether there's like really nothing that's structured and, you know, you're starting from scratch, uh, completely there. Julia, you want so, to go ahead? So we, I mean, in general, in EFIS, there's, there's not a lot of standardization that's, uh, on the one part due to the heter heterogeneity of the, of the recording setups. So there's not, not even a standard data format for the, for the primary data. And for the metadata, as far as I know, there's no, no standardization on the EFIS level. But, um, for the proposal, we were lucky that there was already a previous group looking into micro electrode, um, data to incorporate this into, into bits. So we started from this proposal with, uh, and extended it, uh, for our needs to also fit animal data and, um, yeah, continue developing it because this one was kind of, uh, stopped at some point. Okay. I see. There are, we, in, in the working group that we, uh, started, we, so we did investigate, uh, this, uh, this question also, but, uh, so we found that there were, there were some related, uh, initiatives like, uh, like data archives the, or repositories that were being developed that were not dedicated to electrophysiology, but that included electrophysiology, animal electrophysiology. But, uh, but, the, the, the data structuration, uh, as BIDS proposes it, uh, was not, uh, 
was not covered. But there are existing, uh, other existing uh, initiatives. Okay, I see. Um, all right, so now I want to sort of switch a bit to talk about the, the scope and the actual content of this extension proposal to bids. So, um, yeah, uh, general question would be like, who is this bet for and what kind of data do you want to have in there? Is it just for people who do uh, just work on, uh, I think you mostly work in awake monkeys, if I'm correct. Uh, but could it also be extended to people who do patch clamp and recording on cells? Like what, what, like, you know, how wide are you planning to go, uh, uh, on this, on the content and the type of data that could go in there? I guess we can go, uh, uh, with, a with, a with a timeline. Uh, we, we can answer this with a, with a timeline. So, uh, it's true that at the moment we are, so we, we started working on, uh, on, uh, data uh, uh, from uh, awake uh, animals uh, and in particular uh, non-human primates uh, and at this stage the BEP is, is in fairly uh, good shape for, for this use case um, uh, also um, we, but we, we, we are in the process of launching more investigation to know whether we can extend this to, uh, to all use cases in electrophysiology which is extremely challenging. <laughs> right. Yeah, I suspect. Um, I also was wondering because that's something we, that you encounter with other type of recording or imaging mod modalities is, um, how is it in terms of data format? Because I know that uh, when it comes to neuroimaging, we've been very lucky to have Nifty that has been around for a while that really is helping us. But how is the situation when it comes to electrophysiology? Is it, is it just like you, it's, you've got a plethora of formats and therefore you're going to have to make choices or are a lot of people converging already on, on to uh, a specific format so what's what's the situation there so in, in principle each um, vendor of ifus uh, setups has come up with their own format so there's really uh, more than 20 30 different formats around in the community um, meaning the standardization on that level is uh, complicated but luckily uh, in the last years, there have been already some attempt, some attempts on this. Um, so on the one side, there's the neuro, neuro data without borders initiative that came up with the format that is, uh, covering many different, uh, ethos aspects, um, containing data and metadata in a, in a single NWB file. Um, and there's also the Nix initiative, uh, that is a data format that is, um, also HDF5 based is the same as the NWV format and is also pretty generic in what data it can capture. So this is not only limiting to EFIS data, but it can be used by um, EFIS data software, for example, the new software that is providing uh, um, conversion methods for converting from all of these 2030 EFIS um, formats to a uh, kind of standardized mix format. All right. Yeah, so I suspect there is along the BEP, there's a lot of work into creating like conversion pipeline as well and just working on that as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so on top of the sort of format technical difficulty, do, is there anything else in terms of, you know, any major hurdles you know is going to be coming and that you want to say scared it off, but you think is going to be just, you're going to have to bang your head against the walls a little bit to sort of solve. Well, I think there's there's really two types of uh, main obstacles at this point. Uh, the first one is the adoption by the community, uh, because it's not as in neuroimaging where the community is is fairly well gathered around. Uh, for example, the community created by the uh, organization of Human Brain Mapping Conference. Mm -hmm. uh, so that really created a, a community and uh, and and the whole. Neuro, neuro, it is the neuro, the the, the MRI uh, community, uh, whereas in, in animal electrophysiology, the, the, the users and the scientists using these techniques are are gathered uh, are less uh, uh, gathered into a, a community, so they, they it's it's more spread out. Uh, so the then the the historically speaking, the usages are are vastly more different also. Um, so that's uh, that's really uh, that's going to be a challenge. So we, at the end, I guess we don't expect uh, 
uh, an adoption rate as high as for a human MRI with with this uh, extension proposal. But at least coming up with the standardization is cannot be bad for this community. So uh, and we, we we're receiving good feedback for at this level. The second uh, major obstacle is the one that we mentioned uh, earlier is uh, is extending to uh, to a lot more use cases like. Uh, uh, Patch clamp recordings and all this kind of stuff. For you. So where where the the where the bids uh, um, um, concepts themselves are not ready to support this kind of usage at some point, there are extensions and and, and pull requests at the moment on the specification that should allow uh, this to a certain extent, and we we're gonna then uh, see in practice whether it works. Okay, nice. Um, maybe a side question about that's like the opposite of this one actually would be more, um, what are you, the, what, like maybe you've already seen those, but what are the expected benefits that you would see, um, or the most obvious benefits you could tell people there's a good reason why you would want to sort of like standardize your data, maybe from your personal experience already starting to like collaborate, like, is there any sort of highlights that you think, yeah, this is, this is definitely worth it, uh, worth the effort. So, in, in my opinion, the main or the, the next benefit would be if data, if, if um, experimentalists want to publish data right now, they still have, uh, it's not really defined on how the data should be structured. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's the NLV format and there's mix format, but um, with the proposed structure for bits, um, they can say, okay, we are, we are presenting our data in a bits compatible fashion and then it's uh, clear what minimal metadata are included, and so it makes the visibility um, easier. So this would be the, I think the the easiest or the next steps how this step would be used. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, clearly the uh, the R of the fair data principles is is should be the main uh, the main benefit because uh, well everything else is okay to set up but uh, making your data your animal electrophysiology data reusable by others today is is really a challenge so uh, this should definitely uh, facilitate uh, this uh, this kind of endeavors okay nice okay so before we we wrap up i would like to ask you about sort of the, the next steps and it's more sort of uh how can people help you and sort of like, and what kind of input are you looking for? I think you already mentioned some of those, but if there's anything else you've not mentioned and also well, like how and where can people reach you to actually just like give you concrete, just help. So, uh, I guess I'll do the first one and Yulia does the second one. <laughs> uh, clearly, uh, we need electrophysiologists who are ready to try to, to give it a try. Uh, because we 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 have to uh, work by uh, use cases now with people who come with their data and 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 try to uh, bidify their data with the current specs and because this is how we're going to realize uh, that well this doesn't work or this is not enough or well we thought about it this point the wrong way so we have to modify or to make it more generic uh so this is particularly well this is true at two, at two levels for for the i guess for for the the use cases that are almost ready to go like uh, awake uh, animal recordings but also for all the 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 other use cases where where there is a lot more work so uh, so definitely we need the electrophysiologists to come talk to us and and give a, a bit of their time to uh, to try to uh, with our help of course try to uh, to bidify their data according to the specs okay and this and is how we're going to make the more the more progress okay in, in the same content context, it would be important to include as, as diverse EFUS data sets as possible. So, I mean, we are from our institute mostly focusing on the chronic non-human primate experiments. So this is covered, but uh, it, it's important to include a diverse set of, of data um, to make sure it's actually covering as much of the EFUS uh, world as possible. Okay. And so if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do this? Or was the, so should I, is it just through the, the Google doc of where the content of the BEP is? Is that like the most appropriate way of doing this? 
or so what yeah. oh, go ahead be, this would be this would be the first the first point of contact and also where you can find the the current uh, discussion and the specifications as they are as they are proposed um and then of course if if there's more need for in detailed discussion uh, there's also the incf uh, working group Mm -hmm. So well mentioned with uh, a lot of discussions also on the background for how to organize uh, uh, like different sample or subject data in more detail. So there's also another another bits related work uh, to this, this uh, bordering onto this. Um, so this is the two main two main points. Okay, that sounds good for me. I mean, I. Pretty much answered all my question. Anything else you might want to add before we wrap up? Uh, so, Remy, as a maintainer, what do you think about this BEP? <laughs> let's uh, let's reverse the oh, question. Wow. Let's okay, let's uh, let's yeah yeah yeah. Okay, good. Let's do that. Um, and you're not allowed to cut this at the recording. No, no, I won't. I won't. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first of all, also as I, I have to admit, uh, disclaimer. I mean, I do have my own data set that contains electrophysiological data, so that's also why I have a bit of a, uh, a special interest, I would say, in this one because I'm trying to sort of fit my data in there and try to see how it how it works. Um, I think I would say the the scope uh, is really ambitious, and I think that's also why I like uh, why I like the BEP because you're not afraid to like think big. But definitely, it's going to require, I think, yet yeah, as we said, a lot of inputs from a lot of people to um, uh, yeah, make sure that we all cover like uh, each other's blind spots, right? Because when you specialize into one type of um, experiments, then you might be used to different things and or used to think of organizing your data in a certain way. Uh, but if, um, and you might not realize that someone else just has a completely different needs or that they will also need that extra piece of metadata or whatever, right? So I think that's the, uh, that's the other aspect that I, I like. And that's, you find a lot in bit is that you need to get people who don't usually talk to each other to actually just like <laughs> sit down around the table and go like, so how, like, why do you do this? Like, like and then, and it's, uh, I think it's also, I mean, yeah, that's where you, you mix the, the technical aspects of data management, but also the whole human side of just like, you know, people have to collaborate and work together. I think that's, that's, um, I think these are very, those two things are very, very true for this, for this BEP. That's why I, I kind of, um, I, I kind of it has a special place in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have I answered all your questions? Oh yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. So on that on that note, we'll wrap up and uh we'll see all of you later, I guess, around here. Ciao. Well, bye. thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Sylvain. Bye bye. <laughs>